Hey guys, surprise. <laughs> oh my gosh, we are not doing a music lesson today. We're gonna bake something. We're gonna bake something. This is so random. I don't know if any of you will even be here because we don't usually get together on a Wednesday, but um, I'm at home and I have all these blueberries, like three bags of blueberries. <laughs> and we're gonna make a magical blueberry cobbler. But first, we have to make some coffee. So I'm going, I already, um... hi, Michael. <laughs> Welcome to the kitchen. We're gonna make blueberry cobbler today. <laughs> so um, we are making some coffee first. So I guess a cooking, le a cooking lesson. <laughs> I am so glad you guys are here. This is gonna be so fun. So um, just to bear with me while I put my kettle back on because I'm going to make some coffee today. Um, we're gonna start with a cup of coffee. We're not gonna have any tea. And we're going to make it in this fabulous thing. So um, I have to make sure that my hot water is nice and hot first. So are you guys okay? Are you all right in the world? It's kind of scary out in the world, isn't it? So I thought we could just be whisked away, be in a little magical bubble together and um, make something fabulous. Let's see, I'm gonna move you around a little bit. You're safe, okay, good, that's good. Yes. Do you like my dress? This is like a new new dress that I got. Um, I have worn it, this is the second time I think I've worn it. So, I don't know, I feel like it's very motherly. So I'm, I'm gonna be, you know, channeling a mom energy today <laughs> for you guys. So, um, why isn't this heating up? My candle sometimes is a little funny. Let's see. Please work. It smells like coffee in here right now um, because I have ground up a pile of coffee here. Smell this, smell. Hi, you guys, smell this. There's a bunch of coffee here. Ah, it smells so good. <laughs> smell a vision. So, um, when you make your coffee in one of these, you first, uh, well, you need to, I don't know that this is working. I don't think my kettle's really working. Let me just do it again. Sometimes you just need to give it a little turn. Otherwise, you know, I'll just put it in a pot and, hi, Sylvia. <laughs> just put it in a pot and bring it to a boil on the stove if it's not working. So anyway, you need to, you need to um, kind of wash this out. Oh, there it goes, you hear the kettle. So you need to just rinse this out really briefly um, with some hot water and let it drain and then pour that out and then you can put your coffee in. So um, when I do that, I grind it like this. So hi, Suthis, su 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 <laughs> sorry I'm pronouncing your name wrong. I try, thank you so much for being here. So this is kind of the grain um, of the coffee and you don't want it to be too thin you don't want it to be too thick either so the the water is all boiled to 208 i'm sorry that i mispronounced your name i try sometimes i struggle i struggle you know english just just words in general are challenging <laughs> for me sometimes so you just let let this kind of rinse out and then you're just gonna pour it out kind of warms this up too doesn't it so, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for your patience. I'm gonna just dump that out. And then I'm going to dump all of this in here. So there we go. I was taught this by a chemist. <laughs> okay. So you need to gently let this bloom. I'm gonna lightly pour water over it and then you're gonna just let it bubble out. So you're gonna let all the steam kind of bubble out. And I guess that helps take some of the bitterness away. So isn't this fabulous? This is like a little coffee cooking lesson <laughs> with a violin and viola masterclass. Yeah. So I'm just gonna let that sit there for a minute or so. And um, I am using a recipe from the website natashaskitchen.com. Natasha's Kitchen, and um, like, look at this fabulous thing that we're going to make. 
Doesn't that look so good? <laughs> and you know, blueberries are really good for you. Blueberries are so, so good for you. Um, so this is like a, look, it's gonna look like this. By the end, so we're gonna put it in this pan and um, I wish that you could come over and try some. It's like one of my favorite things in the world and it's very easy to make. But first we have to have our coffee, you know. So I think this has kind of bloomed enough. So I'm going to fill it all the way up to the brim. Just going kind of back and forth over the coffee. It smells so good. It smells so good. You know, my mom and I wanted to open a bakery when I was a little girl. We always thought that would be a fun thing to do. So it's kind of like a little virtual bakery. <laughs> okay, see you in a second then. All right, so I'm gonna just let that go down. And while that's doing its thing over there, um, let's get started with this recipe. So let me see. Um, you know what, I'm gonna put this <clears throat> coffee over here so it doesn't sound so loud while it's kind of dribbling. There we go, hopefully that's not so loud. Okay, so it says it only takes 15 minutes to prep. Um, it takes 40 minutes to bake, so it's like 55 minutes in total. So we might be here for a little while, while we'll see. So for the filling, we're going to need, I usually, I use these three, I use three bags of frozen um, blueberries. And this is really, really important. When you make blueberry crumble, you need to make it with really tiny blueberries. Don't be making it with those gigantic blueberries because it just, it doesn't come out well at all. So at Trader Joe's, they have this brand, Wild Blueberries, and the blueberries are like this big. They're really, really tiny, and they have an amazing flavor, an amazing, amazing flavor. So it says they're grown in the boreal region of Quebec, Canada, 100% wild boreal blueberries, free of pesticides from Trader Joe's. So next time you're at Trader Joe's, pick up three bags of this and you'll be all set. Okay, we need lemon juice and lemon zest, flour, sugar, cinnamon, that's for the filling. And then for the topping, we need flour, sugar, brown sugar, salt, butter, oats, and uh, sliced almonds. So let's start with, uh, let's start with the blueberry filling. Okay, oh, hold on. Let's finish this. So I usually do this twice. I'm gonna just go over this one more time. Right. Tell me about your day, you guys. Are you all right? Surviving? People are freaked out right now in the world. But um, we don't have to be. We can be in our little bubble here in the kitchen. And all is well, you know? Yesterday I was, um, teaching my lessons in the city and we just had a great time. Um, I put us all in like a little bubble. Sometimes I like to say that. So, you know, you come to your music lesson and we're just in a little bubble outside of the world and nothing can get in. No thoughts from the outside world come in. Um, you're just there to explore and have fun with music. So we're in our little bubble here to, today together too. Okay. So while that's doing its thing over there, I'm gonna grab a great big bowl, right? And I'm gonna dump in all these blueberries, right? So let me just grab some scissors. And I'm gonna cut them open. Each bag has, this says it's a pound. And it, they want, let's see how many pounds do they want? They want two to two and a quarter pounds. So I guess I don't completely need three bags. I'll use two. And I think I might have one that's open in the freezer already because I like to put these blueberries in oatmeal. I like to put them in yogurt in the morning. So let me just show you the size. This is very, very important. You see how tiny they are? Yay, thank you, I'm so glad. Um, this recipe is on Natasha's natashaskitchen.com. See how tiny these blueberries are? And they're like very juicy. <laughs> so 
You want a very tiny blueberry when you make blueberry cobbler, not a really big one. You know what I should do? Um, I will see if I can figure out how to like post this recipe um, after the live stream and see if I can, you know, like I can make little posts on YouTube, I'll do that. Either that or I'll, if I can't do that, then I will do it on my Instagram, um, on my story, I'll just screenshot. Cause I, it doesn't let me link things, but I can screenshot things and kind of give you the website. It's Natasha's Kitchen, natashaskitchen.com. So that's bag number two. So bag number three, I am going to put back in the freezer. I'm just gonna grab um, one bag that's already open. So this one's already kind of open, so I'm, I'm going to put in, I just opened this one this morning, so I'm going to just put like half of that in too. Something like that. So it's a great big bowl of blueberries, it's mostly blueberries. <laughs> I put a little more than half. Okay. All right. Oops. Okay. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to just wash my hands. I did already wash them, but I'm just going to wash them again because I think that would be wise. Okay. You guys gotten any practice in today doing... Doing any practice? I haven't practiced yet today. I, I have had a very relaxing day so far. Um, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Well, I teach online on Wednesday, Thursday. Um, and Friday is my day off, so I don't do anything at all on Friday, except have fun. <laughs> but on Wednesday and Thursday, they're kind of like my relaxing days. And, and so I've been taking it easy in the morning. Okay, let's see what step two is. Step two, we need a teaspoon of lemon zest. So I'm gonna take one of these lemons and I'm just gonna go ahead and zest the entire lemon there. So, there we go. And for a zester, I really like this. This might have like some lingering Parmesan cheese in it. So let's see, I'm just rinse it out again. Um, for lunch, I made a, one of my favorite things to eat is a kale salad, but I make them really, 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 really good. So I've been showing everyone on my Insta story. Follow me on Instagram, go. It's Violin Viola Masterclass at Instagram. I've been showing on my Insta story every once in a while, you know, like what I eat for lunch and what I might eat for breakfast or something, just for some food inspiration, among other things, you know. Um, there's also some little clips of my students and I playing together on Instagram. Yesterday, one of my students was playing the Vivaldi Winter, and I just love him. I think he's probably 75, 70, somewhere around there. Anyway, he's a professor at Penn, and we had a great time playing through Vivaldi Winter. So when you're zesting, you, uh, you don't wanna get any of this white stuff. This smells so good, by the way, smell. Oh, yummy, that smells. You just want the yellow. You don't want any of the white because that's very, very bitter. So just this yellow top skin, I guess. None of the other stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna just dump this in this bowl of, of blueberries. And then it says um, two tablespoons of lemon juice. So I'm gonna just juice this as well. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this in half. I think the coffee's probably done, so I probably need to pour myself a cup of coffee. Thanks, Michael, I'm so glad. Yeah, I just thought this would be a fun thing. I remember going over to my um, very first music teacher's house in the summer, and we did like a little music garden. She's like my mom, her name's Lindy Ann. She lives in Alaska now, so um, I remember going over to her home and she would show me how to cook things, healthy things. And uh, we even would do like yoga in the morning. And sometimes we would be in the garden. That's how we would start the day was in the garden. 
pulling up weeds. <laughs> By the way, in the corner there, I have some shoes to give away. I, um, yay, I'm so glad. Thanks, Kevin. I've been going through my closet, you know, just getting rid of things. So I have um, a huge bag of stuff to donate to Thread Up. If you guys, do you guys do Thread Up? I've gotten some really good stuff on Thread Up. You can clean out your closet with them too. And they give you like a discount on things that you, it's basically like a used, like a thrift store, an online thrift store. So there we go. Okay. I'm gonna let this sit here for a second because I need to pour myself my coffee, so. There we go. This is all brewed, so this is how much we got out of the coffee today. And I'm gonna just take this and pop it in the bin. And then I'm going to take my usual little teacup. <laughs> my dad gave me these for my birthday um, a couple years ago. Pour this in here. And I don't know about you, but I always take my coffee with cream. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna put a little heavy cream in there today just to be extra special. Always. Uh, when you have animal products, you should really try to get organic. You know, whether it's butter, eggs, milk, cream, uh, meat, whatever it is. You don't have to eat a lot of it, right? But if you do, like any animal products, definitely try to go organic. All right, my dears, cheers. Cheers, I hope you're doing well. Let's take a little sip of tea together or coffee together. Oh, that's really good. Mm. Ooh. Way better than Starbucks. Did you guys go to Starbucks? I used to, we you know, when I was like 20 something, but now I have like a, I live near three casinos and buy their tribal coffee cups. Nice. <laughs> I don't, I never, I go to a Starbucks to go to the bathroom, you know, if I'm on the road or something. But um, they're kind of the McDonald's of coffee in my opinion now. Okay, so we need three tablespoons of all-purpose flour. There we go, so here's a tablespoon, and I've got some flour over here. And you know, since I've, is it three? Three tablespoons of flour. Since I've traveled a little bit, I've been lucky enough to be able to travel. Music has taken me around a bit for studies and whatnot. And the rest of the world, they don't, they don't do the carrying coffee cups around thing. They actually, so I'm gonna lose track, so that was one. <laughs> Here's two. Very precise measurement. Not really, two. And then three. So it's nice to just go to a place that actually makes it fresh, you know, it's made out of the real deal, good quality coffee, and then just sit down and enjoy it, you know? Not be like carrying around a, a great big coffee cup that you're gonna throw away. Um, oh, I wanna show you these. So, these are little things that I take um, when I'm teaching. So when I'm teaching, I have a, at least in one of the places I teach, I have a little Keurig. And um, this is by the brand Simple Modern. And they're just really, I just like the design of them. They're very elegant, they're easy to clean. Um, they don't have like a tiny little, um, you know, a tiny little, neck or anything you can just take the lid off they have a straw mine's covered in lipstick right now <laughs> and um they keep things hot they keep things cold and you know they're easy to wash so instead of like using a little you know disp like disposable cup i'll just bring this with me and i might even like throw it in my purse or something or whatever if i'm out in the world because um, it looks classier too like it's like classier to have your own fabulous cup i think Okay, quarter cup of sugar. So let me find the quarter cup. This is half a cup. This one's a third of a cup. This one's half a cup. So I'm like missing the quarter cup one. Not sure what that is. So what we'll do is we'll just put in half of a half of a cup. And that should be okay. I love how the, the recipe is like, this takes like 15 minutes to, you know, do, and that's going to take me forever, forever, but that's fine. We're just having a relaxing time. 
in the kitchen. Yeah, so I think that's probably, that looks about half, half of half of a cup, so a quarter cup. I prefer things to not be a super sweet personally. I don't know about you guys. And then one teaspoon of ground cinnamon. So I do have teaspoons. There we go. I'm going to just dip right into this one. One teaspoon. There we go, something like that. And just dump that in. Okay. And then I'll give that a stir. So that is the wet ingredients. That's the filling right here. It's very healthy. It's very, very healthy, I think. So give that a stir. And then we're gonna move on to the dry ingredients. I probably should put the oven on because we're gonna have to pop this in the oven. And then it's gonna cook for like 40 minutes. So I don't know, we'll see. We might hang out this whole time. We might do a little music lesson. And then, and then we'll do like a mukbang. <laughs> so get to enjoy it. It's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite things. But yes, you do need to give it a stir because you need to stir all the cinnamon around, all the lemon juice around, sugar, flour, make sure everything's coated. So it looks like this so far. Okay. So there's that. And let me turn the oven on. The oven, let's see, it's hopefully somewhere is the oven temperature. Okay, 350. There we go. By the way, I have a beauty tip for you. <laughs> Last night, I put some olive oil in my hair. I'm gonna move you a little bit closer so you can see. So I slept in a bunch of olive oil, like I think I, I heated up about a quarter cup or more of olive oil in the microwave, just like 30 seconds, and I dumped it on my hair, on my head, <laughs> and um, all the way into the scalp. So my scalp was drenched in olive oil, and then it, I worked it all the way down to the, to the ends. So everything was just like super slick with olive oil, like a warm olive oil, and I put it up in a, um, a clip, and then I put a plastic um, shower cap over that. And then I put a little sleeping hair, um, like, a sleep, like a silk sleeping bonnet. I can show it to you if I remember. And I put that over my head. And then I slept in that and washed it this morning. And my hair is so happy. It's so easy. Uh, so, you know, while you're, you know, if you're stuck indoors during the virus, <laughs> Uh, just, you know, make yourself more beautiful. Give yourself a hot oil treatment on your hair. And if you don't want to sleep in it, just, you know, put it in your hair for like three hours or something. Just, and your hair is dry. Just make sure you hot, heat the oil up. Okay, so anyway, let me stay focused. So the second part of this is the crumble topping. So let's see. What do the directions say? Do, do, do. In a food processor, combine one cup of flour. So we're gonna move over here because I do have my food processor all set up. Let's see, move you over here. There we go. So here, so here's the food processor. Just show you, just like that. We're gonna put one cup of flour, half a quarter cup again of sugar. So let's see, one cup of flour. Bring this over here, this is the flour. And we need the measuring thing. Okay, I get kind of lost sometimes with measuring things. I lose track of how many, like how many I've put in. So let me focus. Half a cup. And here is a full cup. And then a quarter cup of sugar. So that's again, I need to use half of this. Pop this back. And grab the sugar. So 
I'm gonna put half of this in because we need a quarter a cup, not a half a cup. There we go. And then a third of a cup of brown sugar. So let me grab my third of a cup thing. I think this is so lovely. I'm so I'm so glad that we're we're doing a little cooking show. I think it's so fun. Okay. So a third of a cup of brown sugar. There we go. And then an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. Okay, let's see. Um, what's this? Oh, this is an eighth of a teaspoon. It's very small. This one's very, very small. So let me grab the salt. Here we go. All right. And then we need, okay, I need to combine that and then I'm gonna add the butter. So let's see, I'm gonna put this on down here so you can see. Okay, um, I don't know how to turn the volume off. So what I'm going to do in case it's really loud, I'm gonna just move you a little bit further away. Okay, so on. Okay, well, <laughs> that really didn't combine anything at all. It did nothing, it did absolutely nothing. So I'm gonna just give it a little stir. Give it a little stir with a spoon. Let's see. It's that brown sugar, it's just all clumped in one, one corner. I think this is what I usually use, this thing. Sorry, I need a cameraman to help me, or camera girl. If, you know, if, this, if the screen is wrong, just yell at me and I'll try and catch your comment. So, there we go. That looks like it's all combined. And now we need, add the diced cold butter and pulse until the butter is the size of a pea. Okay. So that means we need eight tablespoons of butter unsalted. Okay. So this is already... Eight. Oh, thank you. I'm in the screen. Okay. So let me cut these into little pieces. So it's easier for the food processor. I hope this one isn't too large. Maybe that's what it is. That this that this is just too big. Um. I think I need to get the smaller one. <laughs> so uh, that means I need to get a, a chair because I need to stand on the chair. Need to get the smaller um, food processor thing. Okay, so you guys make sure that I don't fall, okay? I think it's here. There we go. This looks better. This looks better. <laughs> the whole kitchen is such a mess. There's like stuff everywhere. Everywhere. Okay. I'll try not to make a horrible, horrible, horrible mess. Okay, I think that this needs to go on here. Okay, I get the nervous, you know, working with technology a little bit. So I'm not really, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't really know what I'm doing. This doesn't seem to be right. This doesn't seem to be right. This isn't right. So, so here's what, here's what we'll do. We're going to, I feel like Julia Tubb. Here's what we'll do. We're going to use our fingers and we'll just kind of mush everything up together. So, because um, I just don't know how this works. I don't think this is going to be right. So, okay. I'm going to grab this bowl here. And we're going to dump this in here. like this is funny because like the whole kitchen is a disaster it's a complete mess it took a mess okay. oh this is like this is stuck okay Whew. okay 
So let me wash my hands again, and then I'm gonna cut this butter very small, and then we're gonna just mush it all together. Just mush it all together. So, let me wash my hands. Do you guys have a favorite dessert? Is there anything that you always make? This is one of my favorite things. Um, I actually, at one point, was baking my way through it's, there's a fabulous bakery in um, Santa Cruz, in California. I think it's Santa Cruz. It's called Gales, and they have a bakery. Like, it's the greatest bakery on the planet. So, anything chocolate, oh yes. Uh, I was baking my way through this. I, I learned how to do croissants, all from scratch. I made a wedding cake. I made so many cakes. Those many cakes, puff pastry, just all these, all these things. That was many years ago. I think that was before I started my YouTube channel, even. So, okay, I'm gonna cut this butter in half, and then I'm gonna cut it into tiny, tiny pieces. So let's see. Sorry about that dripping noise. That's the sink. Not sure how to stop that. It's not the faucet. It's just some things running down the sink. Okay, so everything's cut very small, and I'm going to take off my ring. There we go. I always wear that ring. My dad gave it to me. Okay, and just dump all the butter in, and um, okay, and just squish it around. It's going to be fine. <laughs> So, um, let's see, what else can we babble about? I've been trying to clean out my closet, you know? Have you guys switched your wardrobes over to spring yet? It's kind of hard, I mean, I'm like, is it spring or is it not spring? Because, <laughs> you know, with the weather being all funny, I, I, never, I never know. Sometimes it's cold, sometimes it rains, sometimes it's a little snow flurry -y. And then um, sometimes it's, you know, really hot. Well, not really hot, but it's, you know, maybe 70 degrees or something. So I never know what, what to wear. But this is the first year I've really wanted to, I've really, really been trying to dress in a more elegant, professional way. Um, one, because it's kind of the first time in my life that I can even kind of afford to kind of splurge on some nice professional clothes. But... I'm 30 now, so I want to make sure that I look respectable and, you know, look more professional. So I've been taking advantage this year of all of the sales at some of my favorite um, clothing stores. So, and I've noticed it really does matter where you go. Like, you can't just go to, like, a Forever 21 or an H&M and things like that. So khakis oh that's funny your winter beige khakis to your spring beige khakis <laughs> yeah well khakis it's a great a great thing you can wear them any season obviously <laughs> so yeah but it's it's been an investment but if you if you go to a good store that like that where things are really made well like the quality is there then i think things last better and they look better 31. No, I'm 30. <laughs> yes, I'm 30. I was born in 1990. My 90s baby. So, okay, I think this butter is pretty well mushed. I don't know that it's the size of a pea. We're getting kind of buttery clumps. So, yeah, we'll just, whatever we'll be, we'll be with this. I'm going to try and mush it a little bit more so it's more distributed through the um, mixture because right now it's just all in great big clumps. And then I need to add some cooking oats, quick cooking oats, which I don't have, but I have just regular oats, and then a cup of sliced almonds. So we're almost done making the blueberry cobbler. Okay, so here's my hands. I'm <laughs> gonna rinse those off. And the next we're going to add the oats, and then we're going to add the almonds, and then I'm going to dump everything into the vessel to cook it. Okay, so let's see. We need the oats. 
which are here. We need half a cup of oats. So these are not quick cooking oats. These are just regular old fashioned oats. But I have made this before with quick, um, the quick oats and that does work very, very well. And then I'm gonna just, there's a cup of sliced almonds. Oh, that's what you sprinkle on top. So we're all good. I'm going to move us. Whoopsie daisy. There you go. I'm gonna put you here now. And I'm gonna dump everything in here. This is a very healthy dessert, especially with lots of heavy cream. <laughs> That's what I would definitely add with it. You know, when I was on the Isle of Man, they had this fabulous double cream. You, those of you in England, you and your double cream, it is just like to die for. It's so good. Need that. Mm. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Taste test. And then we're going to sprinkle the topping over this. I hope it turns out. I mean, people did this before food processors were, you know, a thing, an invention, so. This must, can't be that complicated, you know? Can't be that complicated. Can you guys see me okay? I'm trying to not dump this all over the stove. <laughs> I don't know if this is a good idea. Almost done. And then I'm going to sprinkle on those almonds, the sliced almonds. They just add a, ni a nice crunch, you know, they add a nice crunch. So these are the sliced almonds from Trader Joe's. And just put that on. I don't think that this is like a super sugary dessert either, you know? I know, isn't blueberry so good? Did you, have you guys ever been blueberry picking? Um, I live by this farm and they do um, pick your own produce. And in the summer they have like strawberries you can go pick and blueberries. And um, I've been, I've taken my studio out there before. It's just so nice. They do like, you know, a fall festival and things like that. It's the best to use frozen. I use the frozen blueberries. Um, I use the frozen blueberries from Trader Joe's. The really tiny ones. At the at the beginning of this video, I was showing you the kind of blueberries that I use, and it like use the little ones because the big ones, they have a terrible texture after you've cooked them. <laughs> so the little ones have a delicious flavor, and the frozen ones are perfect. So the oven is at 350, and I'm going to put this in the oven. Doesn't that look good? And it said 40. 40 minutes. So I set the timer for 40 minutes. There we go. I'm pretty sure it said 40 minutes. This poor iPad is just covered in flour. Um, okay, yeah, bake for 40 minutes. The blueberries should be bubbling at the edges and the topping and the almonds should be golden browned. Here's the hard part. Let the crumble sit for at least 15 minutes before serving. It'll thicken because like sometimes it's a little watery um, because the blueberry juices, they need to kind of thicken. So it'll thicken slightly as it cools and this will stay warm for a couple of hours. It reheats beautifully the next day. So, um, so really it'll be ready in 55 minutes because <laughs> we have to let it sit for a little bit. So I'm gonna move that out of the way. And here's the mess. Here is the mess. So I'm going to try and clean this up a little bit. And then I wanted to show you my business cards I've been working on. I never have like business cards because I've never really gotten students that way before. Um, 
usually people find me, you know, because they're Googling violin teacher or viola teacher or something. By the way, Sylvia, Sylvia, and everyone who's interested, these are the blueberries I use from Trader Joe's. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you better be hungry, Michael. Okay. <laughs> so, I forgot what I was saying. What was I saying? Anyway. I thought I was talking about something. Oh yes, uh, my business card, so marketing. Um, I've been working on some really pretty, oh yay, Where did who did you use? Did you use uh, Vistaprint? I've heard Vistaprint is good. I'm making mine by hand. I'm using a stamp and I'm doing calligraphy. Calligraphy. <laughs> um, and I'm just kind of writing them out, you'll see. I feel like this is lopsided. Is that better? All right. So let me put these in the in the sink here, and I can wash them later. I'm not gonna wash them, you know, while we're together because it will be too noisy. It'll be way too noisy. But just kind of clean up a little bit, put things in their places. You know, this is where like having, um, you know, like those magical like Cinderella princesses where they like whistle and then all like the birds in nature, they like the deer, the bunnies, the birds, they come and help, you know? That would be a fabulous skill to have, don't you think? <laughs> if I didn't use all of these, so I'm gonna just put them back where they go. Put these there. And this is a fabulous sester. It's really, really good for Parmesan, I love grating Parmesan cheese with this thing. And um, yeah, so I've just been trying to do some different business things, you know, marketing things, shake it up a little bit. Um, Cause I, I think I'll probably be, sometimes I'm out in the world and people are like, you know, what do you do? And, and I say, oh, I'm a music teacher. And they're like, oh, that's so neat. Do you have a card? And I say, no, <laughs> I don't have a card. But I have a website, you know, go to Violin Viola Masterclass and go to my website. And I have a pretty good website. I'm proud of it. I made it. I made it myself. This is the coffee we're drinking, by the way. This is from Philadelphia. Um, La Colombe coffee. It's quite fabulous. So I think, they, I mean, they have it at our Whole Foods here. Um, I don't know if they carry this coffee where you are but I, I recommend it. <laughs> so pop this back. And there's this. Everything's just kind of covered in a little dusting of flour. So wipe the table down, put everything back in its place. It's Wednesday, it kind of feels like a Friday. Does it feel like Friday? Or is that just because I'm used to us getting together on Friday? <laughs> I really don't know. I don't know. Okay, almost done putting stuff away. Um, there we go. It's just a little bit of these almonds left, but I'll keep them. cleaning videos are quite popular. People like to see people clean. There's something satisfying, I guess, about cleaning videos. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Put these away. This cupboard over here is so hard to reach. I just, oh, it's designed not very well. Now, I wanted to read a tiny selection to you about blueberries. I have this fabulous book, and it's like all of the magical properties of certain foods. Take it or leave it. Um, but I, I love it. It's, it also kind of gives you like a historical background to the um, whatever the food is too. So it's kind of like a little history as well. So we'll, we will take a look at that in a second. I just want to put some of these things away. Here. This can be safe for later. 
Okay, so let me just grab a little thing to wipe things down with. You know, when I was little, I feel like I would have loved these kinds of videos, just like relaxed little cooking videos. Because my mom and I, we always loved watching cooking shows, but to just have a nice little casual cooking video together is so nice, isn't it? I think it is. Maybe it's horribly boring. But anyway, what are you guys working on? Are you working on any particular pieces at the moment or, or anything? Is there a genre that you're kind of exploring or trying to play things by ear at all or, or anything that you're kind of working on in your practice? Any etudes you like or scales you're liking? Because I'm, I'm really enjoying this medieval still and renaissance baroque early music, basically early music genre, so I'm really, really enjoying that. Um, in fact, I think I mentioned it on one of the videos, but probably in the fall, I'm going to organize a little music retreat on a weekend for the studio and for you guys too, if you want to come. Um, it's going to be in New Hope, so if you take a look at did we say? I'm always torn between pop and classical music. It's hard to tell which one is really me. Oh, well, you know, it, it just suits the moment. Like I have, <laughs> I've been actually transcribing, um, I've been arranging a duet for a rap song for one of my friends and students. And you're rehearsing Pink Floyd anthology for a concert in April. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Um, I'm, so I'm writing out this, I've written out this little duet for violin and viola from for the song Back That Ass Up by, is it juvenile? And that's actually really fun. It's, it's like stuck in my head all the time. So we've been, I've been writing out a rap song. So all, all different genres, you know, all different genres. I don't know that I would listen to it, um, but it's been fun to arrange it. So yeah, I'll probably post a little video of that on Instagram if you're interested to see that in the future. But I wrote that out for him, for um, his friend. So that'll be fun. I'm putting this chair back. Okay. So this is the business card writing station. Okay. So let me show you my beautiful, and flyers. I've been making like little flyers as well. So let's see. I'll grab my coffee. Okay. And I'll just sit here. So I've done some of them already. And I don't know, I might actually take them to like a print store and like have them printed on like glossy paper. But I just did a little stamp and then wrote violin viola instruction. And then um, I'm gonna blot out my phone number because I don't want the world to see that. <laughs> Although maybe I should, I don't know. But my website, my name, um, the area, Philadelphia area and online and just just making them really pretty. So, and I've done it also in a gold, a gold tree, which I think I like better. I really like the gold. So, oh, Vincent, hi, I am so happy you're here. This is totally a British inspired uh, get together because we made blueberry crumble. So yeah, Quick, does QuickBooks make these? I know Vistaprint does, and I haven't done anything to the back yet. So, um, but I thought, you know, if I took it to, like FedEx or like a local place. Um, do you like, do, so, okay. Do you guys like the black one or the gold one better? It's kind of hard to tell. Cause I think I like the gold one better. Gold's kind of more me, I think. Um, let's see if I can find another like black tree version. Here. Let's see, this is the black tree and the gold tree. And I'm using a different pen. This one's a calligraphy pen. And then this one's just like a regular pen. It's like a darker, um, it's like a darker ink, which is, this is like a lighter ink. So, oh, oh yeah, Vistaprint or similar. Okay, I will do that, I'll, I'll see. 
So, cause I like the, you know, I like the tree. I resonate very strongly with the, that symbol, the tree symbol. So those are my little potential business cards. And then these are little flyers I've been working on. So same kind of thing. It has my, what I do, you know, whatever that is, whatever that says, violin, is it? At violin, viola masterclass. Um, my name, my website, my phone number, which my finger is covering, and then the location here. So, um, yeah. I'm excited. I feel like it's very artsy, like it's very artistic. You know, I'm getting like so hot. I think I probably need to like open the window, take this off. So, we need to read a selection about blueberries, the magical properties of blueberries. Remember I told you? We had to, do you like the gold one? Yeah, have a gold tree on it. I think so too, I think so too. Matches my hair, oops. Okay, and a few treble clefs, yeah. Uh, oh my gosh, <laughs> no, how rude, <laughs> no alto clefs. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to look on maybe like on Amazon. I tried to go to like a local craft store and they didn't have like any um, music stamps or anything. Yeah, or a bow or something. They didn't have any like music music stamps that I really liked, so I might have to kind of look to, to find some more. Because um, I think rather than having like this symbol, you know, rather than, ha I know you're just kidding. <laughs> I know you're just kidding, Vincent. Um, rather than having this symbol there, I could have like a an alto clef or a treble clef or something, you know, so. I don't know, but I see, I like the writing. I feel like the writing looks very pretty. So I worked hard on trying to get the right feel for that. Um, so, okay. Let's take a look at blueberries. What is the meaning of blueberries? Let's see if I can find the index. Um, Blueberry. Oh, there's lots of things having to do with blueberries. Let's start it. Um, let's find some place in the middle. So 212. Let's see what's on 212. Do, do, do. Okay. Uh, nope, that's not right. Maybe 233. Let's see what 233 is. No. Maybe 106, let's see what 106 is, 106. Can you hear my little cat? She's, she always does this, like if I'm teaching online or if I do a live stream, she's like, okay, I'm gonna go to the bathroom now or I'm going to go eat something. <laughs> ah, the blueberry, okay. So you see, I'm looking up the meaning of blueberries because I like, you know, to know the, know the feel of them, you know, like the magical use of them. So blueberry um, energy is protection, which is the perfect thing for this time of, you know, with everybody freaked out about the viruses and things like that. So this delicious Native American food is a welcome addition to the arsenal of protective foods. Eaten with visualization, it increases our magical defense systems. So here are some suggestions. Eat a blueberry pie. <laughs> or a blueberry cobbler. Um, yeah, so that's interesting. It's a protective kind of fruit. If you take it or leave it, you know. Oh, there she is, you see? She made an appearance. She made an appearance. <laughs> um, so protection. Protection. Let's see what coffee is, because we all drink coffee every day. Let's see what coffee is. Um, coffee. Where is coffee? Cookies. Okay, I can, I'm actually, I'm like really good at the alphabet up to H, but um, after H I get confused. So let's see, oh there, coffee. Let's see what 106 is. Um, does it say anything? I'm on 106. How about 133? Let's see what 133 is. 133. Maybe 134. That's so weird, it's not here. 
136. Did you guys have any guesses what coffee is? Like what the meaning of coffee might be? What the feel, the energy of coffee is? 188. I'm like on a wild goose chase to find the meaning of coffee. Beer, that's not it. This index is just weird. 197. Okay, any guesses? what coffee means. Ah, oh, here, tea and coffee. Let's see, tea, uh, the conscious mind. That's interesting, that's the energy of it. The conscious mind, money, courage. Ooh, that's the perfect thing when we do our live streams. Um, tea, the conscious mind. Mm. Coffee, also the conscious mind, physical energy. Coffee probably originated in Ethiopia or some other tropical African area. The local people made the berries into wine and also ate the beans as a stimulant. Around a thousand Arabs in Ethiopia began making a hot drink from the beans. Coffee quickly moved across the Mediterranean. The first commercial coffee house was established in Turkey in 1554. England's first coffee house was opened in 1650. Coffee became wildly popular in parts of the Middle East. Turkish coffee is one well-known variety, but it was never fully accepted among the tea-loving Brits. Let's see. Do, do, do. Coffee's wake-up effect has made it quite popular, but there are indications that caffeine alone doesn't lend the beverage its stimulating effect. Once caffeine has been ingested, it takes from 30 to 90 minutes for it to affect our central nervous system. There's speculation that the scent of fresh coffee triggers the conscious mind. Smelling the rich aroma every morning while we're trying to wake up sets a familiar pattern. After our morning routine begins, the smell automatically kicks us into wakefulness. Later, when this effect may have worn off, the coffee does its work. Oh, the caffeine does it work. Does its work. Um, hmm. It just says moderation is key to the successful use of any food or beverage. Okay, small amounts of coffee or tea can be drunk to stimulate the mind and to energize the body. Brew and drink with visualization. Visualization. So interesting, so interesting. So I am going to visualize that I'm going to be mentally very sharp as a tack. It's mm. very good. So, um, let's see, what else can we do? <laughs> I've got about 20 minutes, 21 minutes until the cobbler's done. Maybe we can go look at it. Let's go look at it. Let's see. It's baking, baking away. Let's see. Um, Let's see, I could show, oh, you know, I could show you some of my new favorite things I've gotten, um, kind of clothing wise. Recently, like if any of you guys are teachers, I could show you some of the things that I like. But first, let's come see this. She's, it, she always says that she's sleeping in the pillows. Huh? Hello, <laughs> did you want to say hi to everybody? <laughs> Come on, come say hi to everybody. She's been very antisocial for a while, and now she's she's sitting on my pillow here. Hi. Hello, you wanna say hi to the world? Hmm? No? <laughs> she's so funny. Isn't she so cute? She's so cute. Okay, let's look at her from this side. There she is. She's very shy. If she knew there was all of you looking at her, she'd be freaked out. Come here. Aww. Isn't she so cute? Um, by the way, we got the coolest thing. This is a molecule. This is an air filter that filters the air of not only dust, but bacteria and viruses. It is awesome. Um, we got it because of allergies and, um, you know, cat hair and stuff. 
but it was perfect timing, you know, with all of this kind of sickness going around. So it's called a molecule. Yeah, it was very, it was expensive, but it has like science to back it up. So it's not like a Dyson. It's um, even more, I guess it's more scientifically tested to do that. So look at this sweet little cat. She probably wants some blueberry cobbler. She's so funny, she only eats one thing. She doesn't like to eat anything else. She just eats her dry cat food, she doesn't want any other things. So, yes, come here. You're so far away, come here. Can you come a little closer? Come a little bit closer. No, okay. Sometimes she likes to sit in between the pillows. She'll be like totally lost in the pillows. Here she comes. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Do you guys have cats? Do you have a cat or a dog or anything? She is so cute. She's really my other half's cat, but I've, I've adopted her. I have the most wonderful other half, by the way. So, there we go. Look at those lovely eyes. Those beautiful eyes. <laughs> Can you hear her purring? You were purring. You were. She's funny. Sometimes she's, she's, we're kind of the same person in a way. Sometimes she's like very social and sometimes she's like, I'm good. I'm going to just hide under the bed, you know, for a little while. Oh, your cat's very old on her last legs, but still very loved, I'm sure. Okay, let's see. I'm going to see if I can stand you up. Welcome to my closet. <laughs> um, I'm not going to, I'm just going to show you some of my favorite, like outfit of the day type things in case any of you are interested at all. Because for whatever reason, it just took me, it's taken me like so many years to find clothes that I really like and feel good in, you know? So um, I recently got this. I was wearing this in the last live stream that we did and it's from Talbot's. It's actually an Oprah Winfrey thing and um, I guess it was like in the Oprah magazine um, Talbots and Oprah you know they go hand in hand and they just have like really cute really really cute things so I just love this this is new um, and I've never worn this I've actually I don't I mean oh no 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 I've worn this like maybe once or twice it's like a little um, just a top it's just a long sleeve top um, I think it'll be cute in the spring to just kind of tie up you know, like with jeans or something. But the thing that I'm really in love with, you guys, are skirts. Like, I really love... I used to... And this is coming from somebody that literally wore pants, like, every day. Like, I used to wear just, like, a black top and jeans for, like, years. So, um, I recently got into... I've been wearing skirts mostly this year. So, this is a new one. These are all from Talbot, Talbot's, by the way. And they're just made really well. They, um, they're high-waisted, so they sit up here, and then they, they just, they're not, like, really short either. They're just, like, the perfect length, so I really like them. Um, got a, a white one. This one's from Express. Really love Express, and, um, this is a black one. Love the black one as well. This one's wool. This one was one of the things I was wearing, you know, for the winter season, and these are some of my favorite things too. These long, um, just like, uh, what are these called? What is the word? A cardigan, like a long cardigan. They're so pretty. I have them in three colors here. This one's a very pretty color, I love that. And then black, so white, black, and this fuchsia. Um, and then tops to go with it. That's kind of another thing. I'm gonna find some nice tops to go go with it. Um, on a quest. Yeah, Talbots makes really, yeah, they make really nice clothes. This is my little dresser. I just love this dresser. It's so pretty. It's so, so pretty. So, let's see. Um, 
This is nice. I, I got this from TJ Maxx. It's like a, it's a turtleneck um, sleeveless top, which I really, really like. And I love these. These are reversible tank tops that I got from um, a store here called Silver Moon Antique. So there's one side. And then the other side is like a, a square shape, which is really fabulous. I love that. Um, so anyway, those are some of my, my favorite things. Favorite, favorite things. Oh my gosh. I need to open a window. I think the oven is just, and this dress is, the material's like very hot. So I need to get a change. Isn't that nice? Sometimes the, you know, the birds come and they, they sit right there on the balcony and they sing and they're so cute, they're so precious. Open these windows too. It's a nice little view, it's a nice view. So, you guys, I'm really hot. <laughs> I feel like I might change, I might change clothes. I'm just wondering like what, where to put you, like where should I put you while I change? Maybe I can like, you can look at these lovely flowers for a second. Okay, can you just look at those for a second while I, I quickly change my back in like two minutes? Okay. Okay, thank you guys. There's still some of you here, thank you. So this is the new outfit, if you're curious. This is that reversible top I was showing you. Um, and this is just one of my skirts from, from Talbots that I got. So it, I could tuck this in, um, but I'm just too lazy. And it's just kind of sits perfectly on your legs, so I like it. Um, we should probably play something. We've got about 11 minutes left and then we have to wait for that to cool. So let's see, maybe we can, maybe we can play something. Let's see. Yeah, it's like a nice elegant outfit, I think. Okay, let's see. This is where my um, violin lives, my case. a double case because um, when I teach I um, I like to have both instruments with me so we could do a case tour even Let's see, I'm gonna move you here there maybe you can kind of see in the case a little bit better or kind of so I don't know about you but I put my my instruments in these little bags. And, and I've had these bags for so many years. I think for probably like, let's see, ever since I've had this viola. So that was since 2005. So that, however many years that is, I've had it for quite a long time. It's just a satin bag. Um, and I just feel like it kind of protects, it just kind of protects the instruments so I, but I don't really, I don't really remember where I got these even. Um, I don't remember. And then I have a little bag that I keep my rosin in. This is my favorite rosin. 
15 years, thank you. <laughs> Simple things like that, I can't really calculate. It's called Andrea Rosin. This is the um, Viola Solo Rosin. They also make orchestral rosin, um, but I don't play in an orchestra, so I just do the solo stuff, you know. I have a mute, if I need a mute for whatever reason, if I'm traveling. I have a trusty little, um, this is like from a, a um, like a black paperclip thing, like a kind of, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> like a paperclip. And um, this is good for taking your chin rest off. Like sometimes the chin rest has this, these tiny little screws and you can use like something like this to unscrew the um, chin rest. My chin rest, however, um, I use a screwdriver to, to tighten it. So that's, that's the Whitner hypoallergenic thing. So nothing, you know, very interesting in here, but I just keep it in this little bag. This is like a L'Occitane bag. I love L'Occitane. So here's an extra little scarf. This is from Silver Moon too. It's a silk scarf. And I just like to, you know, have it in the case. I don't know that I would really, I don't know if it's my color. Like, I don't know if I would really wear it. Let's see. So the way that I, I wear these kinds of square scarves, you fold them end to end, and then from this end here, you're gonna roll. So you're gonna create like a long, um, you know, oblong kind of thing, like this. And then you just put it like, like that. You could tie it even if you wanted, um, like that. See, you never know what you're going to learn. You never know what you'll learn on Violet and Viola Masterclass. <laughs> so, and of course, I have a little handkerchief to clean the rosin off. And I just keep that. I probably could keep it in this bag. Just keep it in this little bag here. I usually have um, like a little pair of fingernail clippers too, but they broke. So um, I have to replace those. Um, I also have a magical stone. It's a Presili blue stone. A Presili blue stone. I think it's from uh, England. I forget. My friend Rachel, who's a student of mine too, she um, bought this for me. It's like a magical stone, so I keep it for luck in my case. And um, yeah, I need to put some more fingernail clippers in there. I really need fingernail clippers. And I also have, you know, a dampen. I usually, I usually use these. Um, but I'm just, sometimes I'm a terrible, you know, violin, viola mom, and I, I don't use them. So, let's see. Um, I was yesterday experimenting with tuning to 415. So normally I tune my A to 441 but I was tuning it to 415 yesterday and it sounded so cool. It sounded so, so cool. So, oops. Maybe we'll do that today. We'll experiment. I'll show you how to do that. How to tune to 415. Okay. You know, the other thing I've noticed is that um, sometimes on my live streams, I'm talking really softly and then I play something and it's really loud. So I'm gonna try and work on that dynamic difference <laughs> and try to just keep everything the same. I'm, not, I'm gonna try and not like babble too, too quietly. So let's see. Um, I was noodling through these the other day. It's been a long time since I've played, you know, any Bach because I've been just kind of playing whatever I want to do, you know? Um, I've just been kind of playing whatever comes to me, kind of intuitively playing. I've been really experimenting with that because um, I wanted to, I ordered a harp, as I, I keep saying, and I, apparently it's coming sometime this month. Um, he said like a couple weeks ago that it would be like the second or third week. So um, I think with the harp, that's what I'm going to experiment with, is kind of intuitively playing. But anyway, so going through these, I also, um, I love, 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 love this book. This is a great book, Cantiga's Renaissance Festival Pieces. This is full of, you know, Renaissance, medieval, um, 
and like sacred music from that time period, but also, excuse me, um, it's full of folk music too, so like old, uh, old folk pieces. And I just, this is actually the band apparently. This is, this is the band Cantiga. And a Cantiga is a, um, like a medieval style piece. So maybe we read through something in here. Okay, let's see, I'm gonna pick you up and we'll move over here. There's like four minutes left on that cobbler, so sit tight, hang on. Let's see, move you up here, grab a stand. There we go. I've got this lovely candle going in the background. Um, this is the candle we were using the other day. Smells like coffee. I just love this candle. It makes everything smell amazing. So it's just been sitting here. There we go. Okay. You know, maybe you'd rather see this way. And you can see my beautiful photo of Sedona. There. Let's see. Move you up a little bit. go. Oh, that's better. That's a better view. That, this is usually my teaching background when I teach online. Okay. So if you want to tune to 415, all you have to do is, this was decorated by my lovely seven-year-old. Well, maybe she's eight now. I can't remember. I can't remember how old she was. Um, anyway, she decorated this for me. <laughs> I think that's on Instagram, actually. There's a little video of us doing that. Um, so what you do is you put your frequency to 415. That's all you do. So I'm going to turn this down. It's basically like tuning down a half step. So 415. Okay, let me grab my viola. Okay, so let's see where we are right now. So it's kind of reading this as a B flat because it's kind of equivalent to tuning a half step lower. So my normal A is coming up as a B flat. So I'm gonna just tune this down. Now it's a really flat A. Thank God for fine tuners. So that's a 415A. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? So it's basically like a G sharp. So, um, let me grab my iPad. Oh! The cobbler's ready to come out, so we're gonna take the cobbler out. Let's see. I'm coming, I'm coming. So, there you go, and let's see. Um, hopefully. And it's bubbling. Looks like this. So I'm gonna let this cool for 15 minutes. You know, it actually looks like it could cook for maybe five more minutes. Um, I'd rather 
I think I want it to just cook for just a few more minutes. I want it to be a little more golden brown. So just put five more minutes on there. Okay. Okay. But I'm gonna grab my iPad and we're gonna put a cello drone on in the background. This will sound really cool. Do you hear those lovely birds? Aren't they sweet? Okay. So grab my speaker and so um, my the piece I'm going to play is called Lada it's um, in D Dorian but since I've tuned down a half step I'm going to put a C sharp drone on let's see so C sharp, cello, drone. Okay, just bear with me, I'm gonna connect it to the speaker. And I'm gonna play the lot of from here. Let's see if I can find it. You guys there still? Okay. Sometimes um you know I never know what's gonna happen when I put my Bluetooth on for whatever reason. I, I just don't really understand how technology works. I'm like that one millennial that really has like no clue how anything works. Now, I don't know whether I've connected you guys to my speaker, if I've connected this. Okay. There we go. Now, why is it doing this? That is so weird. Well, maybe I can't do this at the same time. Just bear with me. It does sound really neat with the drone, so if I can figure it out, it'll sound really cool. Maybe you guys are hearing it. Are you guys hearing it? I don't know. I give up. I'm going to try. Fail, fail, fail. That's frustrating. Okay, well anyway, this piece is written, it was, it's called a Lada, and they're from France. So it says, Ladas were processional songs performed by religious zealots seeking atonement. The word Lada is Latin for praise. This melody is taken from the Notre Dame School, a group of musicians who worked at the Cathedral of Notre Dame and other Parisian churches between 1190, 1190, and 1210. So, just remember that we've tuned it down a half step, so we're at 415.
a neat one. I, I really love this piece. And it and there's cords with it too. So, ooh, there's the blueberries. Let's try it this time. Take them out this time. <laughs> this is the longest live stream ever. Um, this is great, so. golden brown okay so a little more golden brown on that one so I'm going to turn the oven off let that sit there for 15 minutes so timer 15 minutes there we go and we'll go back to our Cantigas book Let's see. Can you guys wait for 15 minutes? <laughs> and I, we, I promise we will try some. It'll be so worth it. It'll be delicious. Let's see. There. Okay, let's see. Another song that I really love in this book are the, um, the Cantigas. Um, I think we've played those before. I'm pretty sure I've played those before. There's a, there was one I was playing last night. That's Lessons. It, it's called Duce Dame Jolie. And it's by the composer Guillaume de Machaut, who was quite a famous composer in his day. So he's a 14th century composer, came from Champagne, you know, the Champagne region of France, building on the poetic and musical forms of the troubadour, the troubadours, 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 just the French version. He blended several voices together in a way that set the standard for the poly polyphonic compositions which followed in the Renaissance. Duce Dame Jolie is a monophonic song, however, in the form known as a virili. So um, just like a minuet, you have virilis um, in the, the medieval time period, so just a kind of style. So I think a virili was for an instrument. I can't quite remember what a virili is. Um, but anyway, I like the name virili. This is the song I love on the harp. This song, like, inspired me to buy a harp, actually. So. are very simple like just so easy to just sight read so love that um cantigas are very cool those are from um spain let's see you guys know the Aaron boat song i love that one love 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 the Aaron boat song these are some new little things i discovered um number five in the book it's on page 12 Belle qui tiens ma vie. <laughs> it's, all, it's all wrong. Um, it is from the orchestography. Orchestography. That must be like a collection of songs, like from the medieval time period. This Renaissance classic can be played in a variety of rhythmic forms to accompany dances of the slow, stately pavan, the galliard in waltz like tempo time, triple, triplet time, sorry, triple time or the fast-moving brawl. The melody is taken from a popular French love song, See Galliard d'Angleterre and Renale Double. So um, here's the first variation. <laughs> Very 
variation. This one's um, in 6-4. <laughs> fast-moving brawl. <laughs> a chain of events which ends in their tragic deaths, of course. <laughs> it's very operatic. Later, this story was added to the legend of King Arthur with Tristano as a knight of the round table. No text survives for this beautiful dance tune, which is in the form of an estampi. So an estampi is another kind of medieval style, like a pavan or a galliard or anyway. Take the tempo at a slow processional pace with each quarter note representing one footstep. So it's kind of our, our kind of footsteps. The underlying rhythm, rhythmic pattern da, 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 can be used by drums or other instruments to accompany the melody throughout. Interesting. I need to get a big drum. I'm really excited. I need to get one. We've added a four measure intro for harp, guitar, or other instruments, which can also play between repetitions and at the end. La Rada is a fast dance which follows this piece. Um, both were found in a 14th century Italian manuscript, which can, contains another estampi slash rada pair, excuse me, called La Menfredina. Hmm. So anyway, this one sounds like this. This is the Lamento di Tristano. <laughs>
little taste of that. And the one that goes after that, the La Rada, I think I have it. You'd think they'd be next to each other, but they're not. The La Rada, I think I have that marked in here somewhere too. Um, where are you? Um, I might have to, I might have to look in the index. Let's see, I'll look in the index. La Rata. Where are you? 92. Let's see. So this is, um, the Larada is a fast dance of the 14th century, which traditionally followed a slower estampi, which is what we just played. This Larada is a companion piece for Lamento di Tristano, also in this book. And there's two different variations of this, um, one with two sharps and one with one sharp. Um, I'll do the one with one sharp to just shake it up, so... something from the 1300s, from the 1300s. Isn't that neat? I need to get a sip of water. I am, I've realized I have not had any water for a while, um, which sometimes happens, you know, when you're teaching a lesson, um, you just forget to, oops, to drink some water. We have two minutes. Amazing. That just flew by with two minutes on this. So how about this? I'm going to get a little bowl and we will make a little serving of this lovely poplar. <coughs> this beautiful bowl. Isn't that lovely? Don't you just love that? Okay. So the most important thing is that heavy cream. So let's grab the, I'll grab the cream. Probably with love, like, you know, a yummy ice cream would be super good, but Nice big spoon. Okay, you know, maybe I can make, I can um, position you so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Okay, um, I'm gonna take a little bit of this over here. It looks a little bit runny. I don't know if I made this one kind of too big, but that's okay. Too big of a container. Oh, that looks so good. You guys, look at this. Doesn't that look so good? I'm <laughs> sorry, I'm not showing you very well. Oops, sorry, sorry for the noise. So it's very juicy and yummy. Pour on the cream. We can't skimp on this. You can't skimp on the cream. There we go. Doesn't that look yummy? 
Maybe it doesn't, I don't know. It smells really good. It smells really, really good. Okay, let me put you over here for a second. Pop this back in the fridge. We'll do a little taste test. Maybe I'll put you on the counter. I know it's ready. It is ready. Just making the legs on my tripod a little smaller so I can put you on the counter. Um, so just a second, just a minute. Let's see if I can show you a little visual. That's what it looks like. <laughs> it looks a bit like goo, but it's yummy goo. It's really good. Oh my gosh, that's so good. You guys, you have to try this recipe. Mm. It's like crunchy with the almonds and the flavor is so good. It's like really intense blueberry, um, a shoulder strap selfie stand. <laughs> That's funny. It's gonna turn my teeth um, like purple, so. Mm. That's really, really, really good. So this is called a blueberry, hold on. Let me, let me grab my, one sec. I'm gonna grab my iPad. Okay. This recipe is from Natasha's Kitchen. There. So at the top here, Natasha's Kitchen. And it's this blueberry crumble recipe, blueberry crumble recipe. And you have to, remember? Remember what kind of blueberries you have to use? The tiny little blueberries, tiny frozen blueberries from Trader Joe's. These ones. Just screenshot this. Screenshot it. You won't, you'll regret it if you don't screenshot it. These are the best blueberries. They're very tiny and yummy. You need the tiny ones because they have the best flavor. And um, when you have, when you've cooked like gigantic blueberries or just like normal sized blueberries, they get, they just like have a weird texture in your mouth. They just don't uh, taste right. But these little ones are perfect, perfect, perfect. Mm. Well, you could eat this for breakfast. <laughs> you could eat it, you know, as a dessert or for afternoon tea. Yum. It's very good. It's very, 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 very good. And um, it worked well without a food processor too. So. Mm. The only thing I wish is that the crumble part was more crunchy. So maybe what I would do, I don't know if this would be the right thing to do, but I would turn the heat up maybe to like, rather than 350, turn it up to 375 or 400 for maybe five minutes or something and see if that makes it a little more crunchy because it's nice to have the crunchiness of the crumble on top or you could try like making it in like little muffin tins i think i've done that before in little muffin tins and it's all gone mm. i need to go have a sip of coffee and then I'm, you see how it's made my lips all purple Probably um, need to drink some water after you have this uh, dessert because your mouth is gonna be all purple and everything. But coffee might not help at all. It's gonna make it worse. But oh, 
you guys, this was so nice. I hope you enjoyed our little get together, our little hangout. I don't know when I'll do the next one of these because, you know, this is a music channel, but it's, you know, my channel. I can do whatever I want, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, I will see you guys on Friday. We'll do some music. We'll sit down with our tea. Maybe you guys will have your crumble. Maybe you'll have made the blueberry crumble or something. And I was thinking it's like a different kind of oatmeal. Yeah, it's like a different kind of oatmeal. Yeah, it's just mostly blueberries with a little oatmeal on top. <laughs> so, um, all right, you guys, you stay safe out there. Keep your mental peace. Don't just turn the news off. You already know what's going on in the world knowing more about the news like isn't really gonna help anything it's gonna make you just more freaked out so put yourself in a little bubble right oh i learned this fabulous little meditation from psychic bob you go go watch psychic bob's channel i love his channel so much um he has this like like blink meditation where it's like three seconds what you do is you close your eyes you count to three one two three and you blink and then you imagine your whole body filled with light. So let's try it together, okay? So I'm gonna do one, two, three, blink, and then you're gonna blink, and you're gonna imagine your whole body shooting full of light, okay? So ready, let's try it. So close your eyes. And when I say blink, you can open them and then blink um, if you want, or you can just keep your eyes open, whatever. So one, two, three, blink. <laughs> And your whole body is full of light. Okay, it's not fun. So, all right, you guys, I'm sending you my love. I will see you on Friday with our tea and coffee or maybe blueberry cobbler. We'll see if there's any left by then. And you guys take care, okay? Bye. Follow me on Instagram. <laughs> it's Violin Viola Masterclass. Follow me on Patreon if you want. It's patreon.com slash Violin Viola Masterclass. Love you guys. Bye.